We have had a metric ton of products from MTG this year, and so what better thing to do at the end of the year than to go through and rank our five favorite products each for the year 2020. That's right, there were a ton of products this year and we are gonna give you our list. It's an opinion piece. This is great. We're gonna give you opinions today and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. For a limited time only, if you join the Patreon at any level, you will receive a holographic Jake and Joel R. Magic logo sticker. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel R. Magic. We are about to give you each of our top five favorite 2020 MTG products. But before we go through this, and have you yell at us in the comments later, go down there halfway to the comments and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And then at the end of the video, you can leave us a comment and tell us how you disagree with us. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. If you like facts and science, you're in the right place because we have a fact-based list. Jake and I have picked out our top five. We're going to go through them in reverse order. So starting with our five and going towards our number ones. But Jake, before we get into our top five, you've got two honorable mentions for us. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of great products this year. And I think as much as Secret Layer, a lot of people don't like that model. We just have to get used to it. A couple things that had a really nice theme this year that didn't make my list were Theros Stargazing, the uh, secret layer that brought us all of the gods from Theros and that block, and then also Commander 2020, which brought us a bunch of new commanders, a lot of cards that people have been playing with and building with, and Fierce Guardianship, yeah. which is a really, really great card. That cycle of likely... those free spells if you control a commander came out of 2020, in addition to some of the most hyped commanders of the year, quite honestly. Jake, are those your honorable mentions? Can That's we get it. into our list? That's it. I mean, if that gives you any indicator of the kind of products that we're about to talk about, yeah, get ready for some facts. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my number five and we're gonna go back and forth because I wanna start it off on a spicy note. My number five for the year is Secret Lair Walking Dead. Oh now, man. Before you get your this. torches and pitchforks, I want you to understand that I don't mean this in like a yay, it was awesome, it did so great, it was great for the game and its community. I'm putting it at number five on my top product list of 2020 because of the conversation it started, the outrage on both sides of the argument that it started, and how I very much think that this product indicated some stuff that Wizards has in the works, and we are going to be talking about or indirectly referencing Walking Dead Secret Lair for another five to 10 years for what it did in 2020. Yeah, it's definitely gonna go down to infamy in a lot of ways, and it's got really good cards in it. Uh, my number five is Party Hard Shred Harder. Mm. It is the biggest departure in MTG art uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I really like that. I like that direction. I think that's the kind of thing that Secret Layer needs to do. Yeah, 100%. Uh, big risks. Right. Yeah. They, that's what they need that product to be is their big risk format. And I think that party hard shred harder absolutely did that. My number four, that actually segues beautifully into my number four on the list, which was Secret Layer Prime Slime. This was a one where I saw the art. It's an art style that I loved. I wanted it so quickly. I bought it so quickly. And before we saw some of the even further departures, like with Party Hard Shred Harder, that was some of the wildest MTG art on an officially printed card that we had ever seen up until that point. And so for me, on a, on a real note of, I love this product, I want this product, not like Walking Dead, but Prime Slime, that was one that I snap bought and that's what, in my opinion, secret layers need to be, is a nice representation of playable commander cards in a different treatment that is almost just a visual overhaul proxy, if you will, of the card. Yeah, because it's what we saw before Secret Layer, what people were doing on just 
independent artists that were tricking out cards, whether they were an MTG artist that did sanctioned art for the game or whether they were just independent doing their own thing. Um, I think Wizards of the Coast has kind of taken that into their own hands and now they're like, okay, we're going to do that, but we're going to make it official and these right. cards are going to be like legit printed to demand. Yeah, let's get into my number four, which was Zendikar Rising Collector Boosters specifically. Uh, this is going to be a little bit controversial, I'm sure, because a lot of people are saying, you know, there's not a lot of value in Zendikar. In the standard set, the modal DFCs, the power of those is really yet to be seen. We did see the Bolt Lands, which I think are going to have some good value. But really, the reason I have this product on my list is because of the two seated expeditions and then most likely you're going to get one to three in your box so as far as just cramming the value in there it puts it a tier above a lot of the collector products for me and these fetch lands the enemy fetch lands they desperately needed a reprint absolutely and jake it's honestly proven the model a little bit where the collector boosters are opened in such mass that the cards themselves the basic copies of the cards just to acquire the game pieces have gone way down in price and even some of the collectors products some of the seeded fetch lands like you're talking about in the collector boosters have gone significantly down in price i think much more down in price than people anticipated when they said that's where we're going to be re reprinting the fetch lands and i honestly don't think people are acknowledging that enough that we talked about it so much it was such a controversial topic for eight nine months of the year and then when we actually saw it in practice there was a ton of it opened and the prices went down. That's what segues me into my number three on my list of top 2020 products, and that is Double Masters. Jake, we had a set come out that had a so much heat in it, so many great value targets to reprint at the time of printing that that set then being opened in mass to really go after those you know extended showcase force of wills and what have you that a lot of playable edh pieces have been driven down in price and now is this great time to go and pick up some of those singles that you know prior to this set being printed had just risen to a crazy dollar amount amount and you didn't want to go pick them up but when yep. people are opening chasing these lottery tickets the normal stuff gets pushed to the side but it's an even bigger pile it turns into this draft shaft where you're going through and you're like oh my god this used to be a 30 dollar card now it's eight bucks dope yeah i'll take yeah. i'll take a copy <laughs> as of the filming of this video the price of that product continues to go down despite all of the good cards that are in it good commons good uncommons oh yeah great great uh spread of mythics as far as uh, if you do open the VIP product, that product didn't make my list, but it's definitely a notable product. And we'll get into my number three, which is Ikoria and Ikoria Collector Boosters. What I really like about this product is the fact that it was a really tasteful way of blending Magic the Gathering and Godzilla together. My number two is the Godzilla promotion with Ikoria. That promotion specifically and the framing that Jake is referring to where we saw that Wizards came up with a clean, tasteful way to essentially print proxies of third-party IPs that have nothing to do with MTG in and of itself. I can't tell you, yeah. Jake, I remember my initial reaction when I saw that frame the first time and I went, wait, hang on, oh, oh, I see, oh, oh. Just like when you see like Godzilla is actually called Zalortha and there isn't a card that exists no. that's actually Zalortha. It's like, okay, Godzilla is going to have this alternative name. We're going to have Luminous Broodmoth is going to be Mothra. We're going to have all of these cards that are, yeah, Godzilla IP, but it fits well into Magic. And I don't remember a lot of community backlash. It makes my number three just because, yeah, it's a, a really fun product. And I think that it was done right. I think that that was one of the biggest shockers for me when we did see Walking Dead Secret Lair was to look back on the Godzilla promotion that I was just so floored with the ingenuity, the simplicity and the ingenuity of, of doing something like that, including that in the game so that you could, you know, have IPs come in and you can make some money drawing us some other crowds because I think at the end of the day, we all want the game to grow. And so when you look at the Walking Dead IP, 
I I look at that secret layer the first time and I looked for what card they had proxied because I was like, okay, they just printed, you know, Negan cold blooded. It's going to be like, you know, ravenous cut purse or something. They're going to make up a yeah, card yeah. and they just didn't even include that on the templating. And so, yeah, I think the people that were not a huge fan of Godzilla being in Ikoria then saw what the other end of the sword could be, what the other end of the coin, other side of the coin, excuse me, should be, could yeah. be. And they said, all right, okay, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> So that was my number three, and like Joel said, that was his number two. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get into my number two, which is another secret layer product. Wow, Secret Versary 2020 really had some curveballs for me right at the end, as I've already talked about Party Hard Shred Harder. Uh, my number two is Artist Series Seb McKinnon, oh, yeah. which is just a really nice direction for secret layer that gives the artist a chance to tell a story and come up with unique art for the cards. I think I. I love that the most out of all the secret layers that I've seen. Yeah, I think that I'm very excited with that set to see what's next. Like you said, Seb McKinnon, that is a killer place to start. Everybody's oh already God. connected to it. Everybody's already nation, into dude? it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. But that's one where I go, oh, yes, I love this idea, Wizards. Give them full reign. Let them pick the cards. Let them pick whatever. Everything about it. Just be like, your secret layer, have a great time. We've come to my number one product of 2020. Oh, and that is it's the number one. Nice. Very cool. That was Commander Legends in general, just the set Commander Legends. Um, not only did Gavin and his team pull off a draftable set of Commander, a draftable Commander landscape, I think was very well done, even though I've only played it on MTGO, and because of the client, those games got grindy. They were still very fun, every single one I played. And I'll also tell you this, from a buyer perspective, Jake and I approach the game in different ways, and I think that's why we have um, such a channel that we're proud of, because we do represent two completely different perspectives on the finance aspect of it. I have not purchased a box of MTG this year that wasn't explicitly for use in the channel, be it a giveaway, be it for Patreon or something like that. Commander Legends, I bought and opened four boxes of this set and I just I want that to illustrate how excited I was with the set how how you know intrigued I was with a lot of the choices that they made how much I had fun like everybody chasing jeweled lotuses and trying oh, yeah. to trying to get this ridiculous new card that absolutely it didn't just cause a ripple that was a boulder thrown into a lake and it just splashed everywhere and everybody freaked out about it but knowing that I am a consumer of MTG that buys specifically singles, secret layers, things like this, I don't normally buy and open boxes or collector's booster boxes or anything like that. Knowing that I as a consumer bought four boxes of this year, I know that other people did as well. I can't just be the only person who normally doesn't buy boxes but bought a ton of boxes of this set. And so I'm really hoping that this was a home run for Wizards, at least from a uh, you know PR perspective, it seems to have been everybody was generally pleased with it i think there was initial backlash on uh, jeweled lotus and opposition agent and whole breacher that we'll see over the next 12 months if those really yeah. become the commander staples that people are calling them but from a from just a, a general aspect i think this set was a home run it was a home run for me i can't wait for commander legends 2 and it was definitely my personal number one product of 2020 yeah, I think it's a great product. It's not even on my list. Um, <laughs> that tells you how many good products there were this year. Yeah, you know, I think I, I do think it was a fun product. I like Jeweled Lotus. I thought Mana Drain, Vampiric Tutor, all of those needed a reprint. I could talk about Commander Legends, but I'm going to talk to you about my number one product this year. Honestly, a sleeper hit. Mystery Boosters. Nice. <laughs> oh, baby. I actually, I love, I love that product so much because I remember specifically... Those boxes were $95 when it first came out, and it is packed full of EDH staples. And what I really love about the product specifically is that it was great for EDH and it was great for players. It was cheap, it was affordable, 24 pack box. I love the packaging even. I love how perfect the packaging is. There's no random 
pop up on it. It's not <laughs> any bigger than it needs to be. It's the size of the pack. Everything about its secondary market price says everything about it. It came out at $95 and now you can't find a box for under like 175. And it's just because, you know, you put Mana Crypt in there, there's a foil in every pack. People quickly discovered that the foils are seeded off of their own thing. So you could have some boxes that have like 10 foil rares. I think it was a sleeper hit. Yeah, you, you also had the uh, convention edition that essentially didn't really yeah. even get to happen, really, honestly. Yeah, sadly. But yeah. it had the, uh, the R&D cards, and so it had this other cool piece of that whole mystery booster story as, you know, as that set's uh, legacy, I should say. And so, yeah, absolutely, Jake. I've got to say, I am happy with our both of our number ones being Commander Legends and Mystery Boosters. And you know what's next? You need to go down there in the comments and tell us which ones we forgot. You got to tell us what your five top products of 2020 are. Conversation is going to continue down in the comments below. Yeah, that's right. I need to know your top five. And you know what? I think we might collate that data. We might put it together and be like, what was the community's top five? Jake is volunteering me right now. Seriously, brutally honest. Let us know your top five. And if you think we were way off, we want to hear about that too. While you're down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Other than that, happy 2020. Here's to 2021. Jake, I'm tapped out. Until next time, we'll see you on the flippity.